Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys, this is another episode of the Raycaster Gaming C++ series and in this video we are going to add textured sprites to our game. So if in the last video if you remember we had this uh, white box which we called a sprite and it was working quite well except the fact that it was just white which is not really what uh, we want, we want it to be textured in different ways. So we need to do that uh, in this video. So for that I'm gonna go ahead and start off by opening up, by the way I have uh, go on ahead and uh, we've got like a uh, image here called sprites.png if I open this up you can kind of see this uh, we've got like this image uh, it consists of three sprites so it's just like an atlas but for sprite so we've stored the textured atlases and the sprite atlas is separate and this is for the like sprites and it consists of three sprites basically so yeah we are gonna use that and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our resources H first of all, uh, resources.h and resources.cpp and in here we are going to uh, add yet another uh, texture here which we are going to actually call sprites like that and in here we are going to go here and we don't actually need image for the sprite so we are going to just say that and uh, we are going to say sprites here like that and uh, we are going to close this now and open up main.cpp uh, and we can close this as well now I'm going to go down here and uh, in here you can see that we are uh, loading our resources textures well we are going to load our sprites in much the similar way so i'm gonna go ahead here we are gonna say uh, sprites.png and in the error message we are gonna change that appropriately and uh, uh, we are going to actually remove this completely and instead of that we are going to directly put uh, our sprites here because sprites have, because for the sprites we don't need any image uh, let's just run it to make sure it's not giving any errors and what you should see is that it does work quite well and yeah it uh, it causes no problems so now it's time to open up uh, renderer.cpp and get started with the actual task of adding sprites of course the first thing we'll do is that we'll pass in the render state argument with our correct sprite so we are going to say resources sprites and uh, uh, just to run this uh, you should see that we still get a white uh, box but now it's black instead of white because of a lack of texture so uh, well actually not a lack of texture the texture is still there however it's not being drawn uh, because of uh, and the fact that uh, we currently are not specifying any texture coordinates so now we need to calculate the correct texture coordinates and specify them here so in order to calculate the texture coordinates, we are going to create a float called texture size, which we are going to just set to resources sprites dot get size dot y, uh, because the y represents the size of an individual uh, texture in the sprite. And uh, we are going to go here and we are going to pass in another argument for the actual texture size. And for the x coordinate, we are going to say uh, we are going to take our current column that we are drawing which is i and we are going to subtract from that our drawing start column and you can just multiply that by the texture size for the y we are going to say 0 in the start and in the end uh, the x is going to remain same but y is going to change to texture size now you might guess that is a pretty big problem uh, pretty simple problem actually that uh, uh, this texture size wouldn't actually give us uh, you know we, we are multiplying it by texture size but uh, i minus draw star does not give us normalized value we need to divide this by sprite size in order to get the normalized value and we can just multiply it by texture size which gives us the actual coordinate to use so with that we have got uh, this in place and uh, you might just say okay let's just run it but you will see a bit of a problem you can see that the sprite does appear and uh, the problem is that if I move like this you can see that the sprite kind of vanishes uh, like that yeah a bit bit awkward to be honest you can see that it's uh, giving some weird effects here when you try to get close to it or you try to do it like this it's, it's giving weird errors the reason is that we are clamping our draw start and draw end while for the actual you know calculation of these values we do not need to clamp them else it will cause problems so what's the best solution well we are going to not clamp the actual variables but do uh, we will clamp them in the loop so when in the loop we'll just clamp them when checking against the conditions like that and uh and this will make sure that they are in the correct range however we should be able to now get a perfectly working uh, sprite here so you can see that we get our sprite which is a barrel here and i can pass through it and no artifacts appear and it is not visible behind walls and basically it's working so we have got like a working object in our scene now uh, currently of course we have got just a barrel we like to have different uh, textures here so how will we go about that so i'm gonna first of all go ahead and uh, uh, open up our sprite.h header which we created in the last video and in here we are going to add another integer attribute called texture which will represent the actual texture of the sprite 
Now in here I'm gonna set the texture of this to 0 and you can see that we draw this and while drawing this we take our texture size like this and all of that but we are gonna actually add, have another uh, actually not really have another int uh, but let's have another int here called the actual texture which will be our sprite uh, sprite uh, dot texture and uh, when setting this we are going to actually let's calculate this once so we are going to have float texture uh, x coordinate we are going to set this calculate this once so that we don't have to duplicate it since it is remaining the same so we are going to put this here like that and uh, in here we are going to not calculate it again instead we are going to just use this variable so texture x and in here we are going to do it similarly just use texture x and uh, with that we have got our texture x here but we can just quite easily uh, take our sprite uh, dot texture and multiply that by the texture size and add that to this whole thing and we can just remove this we don't actually need a local assignment of that and if i run this right now what you should see is that uh, now i get my uh, barrel where it was before uh, here and it's still the barrel but uh, i'm going to go ahead and actually change this to uh, five 4.5 here so that we can access it easier and I'm gonna change the actual texture value to be 1 and what you should see is that I get the uh, second sprite now so if I go out here you can see that I write at the entrance we have got this uh, uh, pillar uh, thing and it's like the second sprite so that's quite cool and uh, now we can also check out the third one uh, we only have three sprites right now of course you can create as many as you want and then you can use them quite easily and this is a bulb that appears at the top and do note that all of the sprites are of the same size it's just that uh, the pixels that are not needed are basically transparent that was all pretty cool but let me introduce you to a new problem i'm gonna go here and change this to 6.5 and then i'm going to copy you at to this here which is going to be at the same x value but for the y i'll change it to 9.5 now i'm gonna make this a uh, a this here what you call it a pillar and uh, a barrel at the first one so if i run this right now you can see that we get a barrel here and the pillar is there and the pillar is actually drawn uh, in, in front of the barrel so even though it's behind it's drawn in front now if I look the other way around it seems alright but that's because we are drawing it in the order that we declare them so uh, the pillar is always drawn uh, you know in front of the barrel and that uh, is not the correct effect. Uh, we don't want the pillar to be showing through the barrel. So how can we actually solve this effect? Now there could be multiple methods to solve this problem but we are going to go with the uh, easiest one which is that we are going to just sort the sprites in order. So we are going to store them in uh, order from their distance uh, based on their distance from the player and and if you sort the sprites in that order then we are guaranteed to always render them in the correct order we can't just skip the sprites that are being drawn on top of them because sprites you know may have different uh, uh, transparencies in them so we want them to be drawn correctly or else it will uh, not work and uh, if you'd like to use a z buffer based approach then you'd like to uh, you know you'd have to use a 2d z buffer for that since sprites are not necessarily always perfectly vertical they may have transparent stuff in them so that won't work correctly so we'll need to uh, the you Know, sorting approach seems to be our best bet so that is what we are going to implement now now in order to implement the sorting sprites by distance thing we'll first of all need to actually change the signature for our render.h function a bit now uh, we want of course our sprites to be reordered but we need to decide whether we want to copy the original sprites or we want to just take a reference to it now we are taking a const reference right now but we'll change that to take a actual modifiable reference so that we can uh, you know order them in place however if for some reason you decide that you want your order of the sprites preserved then you can choose to uh, copy the sprites but uh, we really don't care what order our sprites are in in the vector outside of the renderer so we are gonna let them be in whatever uh, you know order the renderer seems uh, uh, things to be appropriate so in here we are gonna uh, go ahead and as I said we are gonna sort the sprites for that we can just use the standard library algorithm so for that we are gonna use std sort and for uh, we are gonna have to you know pass in the sprites begin and ending iterators and uh, if you actually just try to do that it would give an error hopefully uh, it, because the, you know our sprite is not by default comparable uh, but we'll implement a lambda function here to actually compare two sprites so we'll take uh, this lambda function will take two arguments both being two sprites and we need to uh, you know basically tell whether the first sprite is the greater than the second one so for that we'll need to uh, go ahead and uh, 
uh, you know uh, basically implement some way of figuring out how the distance of the sprite now for that we are going to of course have to reuse that uh, uh, you know thing that we use for calculating the distance so we are going to implement that as a lambda function as well so here i'm going to create an auto a lambda function called guess distance which is going to take just a single sprite so point sprite and write and it's going to return uh, is going to return uh, the actual distance of the sprite now for that we'll use the pythagoras theorem and we'll need to get the distance relative to the player of course so this will capture the player variable because uh, you know in lambdas you can capture variables from outside the scope of the lambda so we're going to take that we're going to take player dot position dot x minus the sprite dot position dot uh, position Right dot position dot x. Uh, this will just uh, raise this to the power of two, scare it, and then we are going to add to this, of course, the y value. Just a simple Pythagorean theorem, as you can see. Uh, we are going to say actually uh, plus std power, and we are going to say player dot position dot y minus sprite dot uh, position dot y and for the value we are again going to say 2 now you could take the actual square root of this to get the correct distance but we don't actually need the square root since we are going to be uh, you know using uh, uh, just it for we are going to using it for comparison so square root is just unnecessary now we need to um, use this get distance here and for the actual as i said we are going to check the distance of this so we are going to use get distance to check if the distance of a is equal greater than uh, distance of b if that's the case then we are going to just return that value from this function of course in order to be able to use this guess distance lambda function we'll need to actually uh, capture it in the capture list of the uh, this inline uh, lambda function and with that we have got uh, basically a um, sorting system working and what you should see is by the way i added three sprites now you can see that now uh, this is drawn in the correct order so if i go here i can turn around i can see this barrel i can go here see this and you can see that I can see this light here and if I turn around now it's still drawn in the correct order so yeah that means that everything is working and uh, now as I like move around it uh, draws everything in the correct order because it's now sorting this right by the distance from the camera so yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video and in this video we implemented like completely working textured sprites and we are actually going to end this series here and in the next video we are going to start up with our new series and uh, I'll see you in the next one and try to guess what the next series is going to be. I'll leave off a pretty obvious hint at the end of this video so bye. Did you get that?